Well, our next guest calls housing a bright spot in the economy. Bob Nardelli is a former Home Depot CEO. He also ran Chrysler and was a GE executive and a Fast Money friend. Bob, always good to see you. Thank you, Liz. It's great to be with you. And uh, if I could just pick up where Tim left off, I, I think, uh, again, I, I shared with you earlier, I think housing is a real bright spot. And I think the demand uh, for housing will continue for some period of time. It certainly is a seller market. And Tim, if you look at all of the support for housing, whether it's Home Depot, whether it's Lowe's, Tractor Supply, I'm really proud all three of those CEOs are Home Depot leadership graduates. I'm proud to say uh, of, of their success. But I think this is going to continue for a while. I think with the pandemic, we're seeing people, as you said, Tim, moving out. And uh, I think they're moving to areas where housing prices will continue to be high. But I, I think this has a little more leg to it, Tim. I think it really does. So you think that the pandemic has caused changes that will last for much longer than a couple of quarters, Bob? I mean, the, the argument would be that people don't necessarily know what their job situation is going to be, whether they remain employed, for one, or whether yeah. or not they will be required to go back to the office, in which case having a two-hour commute to New York City doesn't really seem attractive. Well, if you look at a recent CEO survey, so that I, I just uh, I just take a look at, 72% of the CEOs say their, their employees or associates are planning on continuing this hybrid model of working from home uh, and maybe going to the office once a week, once every other week. Uh, the other thing that you're seeing is a strong demand associated with this concept is in the used car business. Uh, you know, people are not going to be riding trains, they're not going to be riding subway. We're very concerned still about this distancing. So you see the demand for used cars also uh, being drugged along by this pandemic and this situation that we're in out there today. Mr. Nardelli, it's Karen. Thanks for being with us. Uh, I got a question you might be uniquely situated to answer. In looking at Home Depot versus Lowe's, um, Ellison is about two years into his turnaround or restructure, whatever you want to call it. Do you think he can narrow that gap a lot more between the margins that Home Depot makes uh, versus what Lowe's does? Yeah. Well, if you look at uh, Marvin has, you know, worked at Home Depot. Uh, he came in from Target when we were there, and he really has sat in a number of chairs in the home improvement area. So if you look at where the stock was, you know, at its low at 70, trading up around 140 or something, uh, I think uh, recently, you can see he's already starting to restructure. He's already starting to do some things. Um, I think he'll work heavily on merchandising and repositioning his merchandising. He'll work on branding. Um, I, I think that he has the, the capability to certainly close the gap. I, I think Home Depot, of course, has uh, got many more years. One of the advantages Home Depot has here in Overlows is when we were there, you know, we opened a thousand stores and we celebrated the 2000 store opening. So if you look at one of the real bright spots for them, and the recent surveys show that uh, the majority of the population uh, lives within 10 to 15 minutes of a Home Depot. So strategically, the convenience factor is there for them. I think there's something Marvin is aware of and he might be able to pick up on. It's a, it's a, it's a very good point. Hey, Bob, it's Tim. And, and so to take that point, the next, uh, the next step, CEOs are forced to run their companies more efficiently than ever. We saw uh, some margin inflection, companies coming out of the crisis lean and mean. W what are you expecting in terms of the turn here when we finally do get the economy to reopen? And you can answer it from the broader macro, but, but also uh, in terms of profitability for a lot of these companies that you know, are elephants that have suddenly learned how to dance. Yeah. Well, so I think there's, uh, there's a mixed bag out there. Uh, if you look at, we were just talking about housing, certainly a bright spot. If you look at hospitality, travel, industry, for example, you know, you just look at some of the big flag names like Hyatt and Marriott selling some of their facilities in prime locations. So people aren't using hotels. Air travel is still down. You're continuing to see increased levels of furloughs, both for pilots, and there were some recent negotiations there, but certainly flight attendants and then that just rolls down I mean, If you look at what's happening to the major airlines and then the impact on Boeing over and above what they're having with their with their max problem, that rolls down to GE, GE uh, aviation, jet engine business. So I think it's really going to be a mixed bag. There, we talk a lot about a V recovery. 
but I don't think that V recovery is really affecting everyone. You look at, uh, you know, in your area, Tim, the, the restaurants in New York City, yep. and, yep. and you know, I think it's going to be a very slow recovery for them. I think there'll be some real winners, and there'll be some people that won't see that V recovery. There'll be a little flat, low and slow for them. Bob, always good to speak with you. Stay well. Bob Nardelli. Guy Dami, does this make sense that housing is so strong in the economy we have? I mean, given where claims were this morning, given where unemployment is in general? I, with, just with, under those metrics, no. But then you factor in the fact that people are fleeing these big cities uh, looking to get out. And it, then it starts to make sense, coupled with the fact that interest rates are at ridiculous levels. So it all does sort of make sense. So maybe housing is a bright spot, you could say, for the wrong reasons. It doesn't matter, because if you've been in these stocks, you've done very well. And I agree with a lot of the things that Tim said and Mr. Nardelli said. I'll say this quickly. Karen mentioned Restoration Hardware yesterday, as did Tim. And we've been talking about this stock seemingly forever. Uh, Karen mentioned the short interest. I mentioned that because the stock traded close to nine times normal volume today. So I think many of those, if not all, got squeezed out. So we've been fortunate enough to be in RH Today was the day you pulled a ripcord and looked to buy it back cheaper. I think you're going to get that opportunity. 